Hey you, yes you, I need you to fully concentrate because today's topic is not all cut and dried. So if you're just here for some background noise, I suggest that you turn this video off right now. God forbid he starves. Many of you may have heard of the ROM hack Sonic Delta 40 Megabits. This game has Nito's variants of Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles with their gameplay, protos and mechanics merged into one rather large package. Well, 40 megabits sounds massive, but in reality it's only 5 megabytes in size. Heck, Sonic 3 & Knuckles was 32 megabits alone. But I digress, to achieve the sorcery, the game uses a Sega mapper. Most emulators are perfectly fine with this, after fine tuning a few settings, but how does it fare when you want to play this on the authentic system it was built for? In today's episode, I needed to prepare myself and I went ahead and purchased some extra flashcards. Some cheap, some expensive, and one I will leave a surprise to the very end. But will any of them achieve a flawless performance for Sonic Delta and its requirements? Using version 0.5a, the latest edition as of recording this video, let's find out together. Because this game is so long, I only played through the entire escapade uh, three times, <laughs> and then I opted for certain stages for the rest of the cartridges here and there. The first stop is with my brand new acquirement, the Mega Everdrive Pro. This beast is the flagship of Crix's lineup, similar to the X7 but with some extra features, the main one being able to play Mega CD games, without the Mega CD attachment. That's not exactly going to help us in today's chapter, but will it produce an advantage over the others? Well, I loaded up the game and began my journey. Sonic 1's Green Hill greets us initially, and the zone itself is nothing new. Throughout the whole voyage, however, you have Sonic 3's graphics for the characters and particular objects such as monitors and rings. These are unfortunately unswappable. I would say I would like a proper options screen before proceeding on, so we can tweak some technicalities to our liking. But we may be treading on Sonic 3 complete territory there. Getting to the special stages as before requires 50 rings by the end of the act, but it will make you play Sonic 2's halfpipes. Sonic 1's special stages have been downgraded to bonus stages, if you want a measly 1-up instead. They're accessed via the checkpoints with at least 20 rings, but the other minigames from Sonic 3 can show up instead from time to time. From here, Sonic 1 doesn't make any game-breaking changes, and once you ended the final boss, you suddenly start at Emerald Hill Zone. No cutscene or anything, you're just… there. And as soon as you make your way to the right, it'll become immediately apparent that the beta layouts have been used. Throughout the entire Sonic 2 portion of the game, a lot was borrowed from the unreleased versions such as unused stages, lost badniks, and oh god blimey, do we really need this stupid object? It was removed for a reason, and so are these! I feel even in Delta, they're not being utilised to their full potential. While I'm all up for extending Sonic 2's game time, a lot of assets felt like they didn't belong there. Sonic Triple Trouble's graphics seem out of place, Woodstone still feels incomplete, Sand Hill's map is very confusing, Genocide Zone is just chemical ocean with irritating pipes, and the most annoying aspect is you'll find yourself playing the same boss twice on more than one occasion. It's the classic quantity over quality here, and I just ended up feeling bored and wanted Sonic 2 to end. Top marks for Hidden Palace though, I remember this lift being implemented many, many years ago, and I was astonished then, and this is the only hack where I find this section finished. Just could it be sped up a bit? Thanks. Once you've destroyed the Egg Robo, you actually get a small cutscene, transitioning into the next title, and if you're Sonic, you also get to surf onto the island, which then Knuckles smacks you on and steals all your precious gems. That's right, you lose all of your emeralds, 
every single one of them! You have to get all seven Chaos Emeralds once more! If you're Tails or Knuckles, you just start Angel Island with no introductory demo. But they've lost their stones too! What the heck happened? Did they just fall out of their pocket? If I have to get the Chaos Emeralds again, then seriously, what was the point of me doing the special stages in Sonic 1 and 2? Just to be super temporarily? It's a huge waste of time! Calming down, after replaying the Blue Spheres to get Super Sonic back, the rest of the experience provides the same atmosphere as Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The only real difference I remember is that the prototype music plays in its place of the original. However, it's from this segment where Sonic Delta starts to display some troubling issues. I'm not sure what causes it, because it wasn't the same stage every time. But when you collect a Chaos or Super Emerald in Blue Spheres, the game might crash. Luckily, it does record the Emerald you just obtained, but you do have to restart the same area. It happened three times, once in each playthrough. So one error report within three and a half hours is a minor inconvenience, and I'm willing to let that slide. Two corruptions, if you include Tails' run. It always disrupts when Tails jumps off the plane, no matter what system I tried it on. Albeit, yet again, it still noted my advancement. If the other end of the stick occurred, and the save data got lost, then I would have immediately disregarded this ROM hack. So thank goodness for the save slots. Now, I tried the Pro on every console variation I have, from the Genesis, to the Japanese consoles, to the PAL machines. And when it comes to PAL, something... abnormal transpires. The game's music is unoptimized, and it plays 17% slower. At first, I thought this was just for Sonic 1, which would make sense as the vanilla game acts the same. But when I ensued into Sonic 2's region, and even Sonic 3's, the jingles were still sluggish. It sounds so alien here in Angel Islands, or Wing Fortress's melody, so leisurely. What's going on here? So at the end of the day, Delta is a technically impressive Sonic ROM hack, and is brilliant if you want to play the Mega Drive classics in one run, with some extra content. It's usually here when I would answer that important question, and with the evidence so far, you can probably guess what my answer would be. But hold your horses! Don't go for that cross button yet! We've only just scratched the surface! Now perk up and pay attention, because it's time we put the Mega Everdrive X7 through its pace. Upon trying to boot up the game, the X7 stops its processing and warns us that this is incompatible with either the 32X or Mega CD attached. I tried with just the 32X and then the Mega CD alone, and can confirm that is indeed the case. It won't proceed with the flash until you remove both of them, and upon doing so, the gadget will load the game. And the caution screen directly shows. Now I'm not fluent in Portuguese, but it's warning us that the game will play, but saving any progress will be impossible. Well, that was a straight out lie, because as soon as I press C, it then breaks! Something about unable to use the correct mapper? Which is bizarre, because games like Super Street Fighter 2 uses mappers and that gets along nicely with the X7. Well, that's it, it's irreplaceable. But we can fix it ourselves in two different ways. My pal Sunky gave me the idea to change the ROM header of Delta to camouflage itself as Super Street Fighter 2. Loading this altered bin file without the Sega add-ons will now commence the game without any warnings. Not even the message about saving our development. So I quickly gained one emerald and plow through Green Hill, and turned off the console in Marble Zone. Upon reinstating the system, it had indeed remembered where we left off. I went ahead and trialled the whole game, and again, except for any faults I previously mentioned with the Pro device, this was no different. One crash here, and that was it. Before we move on, I did say there was another way around the problem, with the game not opening. The tinkering around with the ROM header suggests that maybe the operating system of the X7 doesn't fully understand what this game demands. As of the time of this recording, the firmware version 3.13 is the latest, and it can't play Delta. 
However, Nito himself has created an altered OS that you can install onto the cart instead, and that will load Sonic Delta just fine, and will save your playthrough, even with the attachments on, such as the 32X and Mega CD, which is crazy! And just in case you ask, yes, other games I've tried with this converted software appears to work just fine. That's two of the biggest ever drives tested, but what if you have the mid-ranger, the X5? I'll keep this short and sweet, because it nearly acts in the same way as the X7. It won't initiate with any extra hardware, and you have to either adjust the header or the software to run the game. What's interesting is, if you don't do either of these and you try to play the intact ROM on the official OS, instead of getting the in-game attention screens, the X5 will tell you itself that this just ain't going to work, else it is identical to the X7 in every other way. Now onto the X3, and I did pick the black housing, but out of all the colours they decided to give me, red. Long story short, it follows the same footsteps as its bigger siblings. You need to change the header or use Nito's OS. But you must remember, if you want to save your progress, you have to soft reset the console before you turn it off completely. This is not the game's fault or the adjusted firmware interrupting. This is an actual feature of the X3. You have to do this for any game you play. Then we have the EverDrive MD version 3, one of the older, more mature flash cards, and um, <laughs> just, what? Now there are no OS twists for this cart, as it isn't in the same family as the X series, so you're probably thinking that using Super Street Fighter's 2 trick will have to be our saviour here. <laughs> nope, we don't even have to use that! This EverDrive will boot up the game, no problem! The heck? One of the cheapest EverDrives that you can still get operates just fine without any assistance from us? How can this be- okay, watch the catch. A miracle this may be, there is one caveat, and it's pretty major. You cannot save your data. There was no notice when launching the game, but at the same time, I'm not surprised either. So if you have up to 4 hours to spare, and you want to 100% the game in one sitting, then you're good to go with version 3 of the EverDrive series. This means for version 2 or below, while I cannot confirm this, I do not anticipate them to work any better. Nonetheless, you may want to consider other options. Just before we get to the surprise star, I think it's finally time I got my hands on one of these. This is Crix's Flash Kit Cart MD. If you want to cut out all of this menu mumbo jumbo and just get straight to the game of your choice at hand, then this may be the perfect appliance for you. And considering the prices of the other EverDrives, this feels like a steal. It requires the programmer that Crixis sells separately at $58? but at least you only need the one, and I bought the shell for the cart at only $4. You plug the cart into the programmer, connect that to the PC via USB, and flash the ROM you want. It's reprogrammable so you can change the title as often as you like. So here it is, I've transferred Sonic Delta onto the board. The result? Well, keeping our expectations in check, considering its price, the game refuses to load. It just crashes right away. And before you ask, even the modified header cannot bypass this limitation. I quickly try Super Street Fighter 2 itself, and I just get the orange screen of death. And I know it's not a bad ROM, as it initiates just fine on my X7. And for those curious, the Flash Kit MD is not broken, as I tried Aladdin, Sonic Bash, and Sonic 3 Complete, and they're all just fine, except you cannot save an S3C because this apparatus does exclude the ability to save any game. For just $9, I cannot complain about that result really, and as for all the others, except for the most expensive, we need to pull off some trickery to get the game working on hardware. I told you this wasn't going to be straightforward, but before we come to a close, it's time to bring out the big guns. This is the Mega SD, 
a monster Mega Drive flash cart by Terra Onion. Before Crixis EverDrive Pro, this was the device that every other wanted to be, and still is regarded as the best you can get by some people. And it was the very first cart to bring the capability to play Mega CD games without the attachment. Overtowering the rest of the competition, especially where price is concerned, I updated this to the latest software and booted up Sonic Delta. And I am genuinely gobsmacked that this behemoth of a flash cart just sends us face first into Nito's errors. And there's no way to advance. Of course I tried Delta with the modified header, and even that rejects me. And what's strange is, Super Street Fighter 2 plays just fine with the Mega SD. There's no other OS to install, so we're at a dead end. Right? Not quite. Reading a topic from the official Terra Onion forum, you can create a text file that simply states mapper equals 15. Save that text file with the exact same name as Sonic Delta in the same location on the Mini SD. And voila! Now your game begins. Upsettingly, it is infeasible to save. I won't lie, that came to me as a shock. You would expect that this would be able to handle anything thrown at it. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. So after thorough analysing multiple consoles and flash carts, let me answer that all important question and explain my reasoning. Does Sonic Delta 40 megabits work on real hardware? Partially. Why partially? Just look at this handy chart. Bar the EverDrive Pro, to this date, every single other tool just says no. We have to tweak the operating system or even hex edit the bin file ourselves to fool the cartridges into loading the Sonic ROM hack. And even then you may not be able to save on them, and you could encounter a rare halt or two. You could argue that after doing this, theoretically it does work on the consoles, but should we have to be fixing this on their behalf? When you play a game, you expect it to work out of the box. You wouldn't buy Spider-Man for the PS5 and then find out you have to alter the software here and there to get it in a functioning state. No, you would complain and say that's not working and tell the game company to issue a patch. And that's the same principle here. Five no's, one partially and one yes. That truly averages to a no ranking. The only reason why I'm giving it a partial score overall is that Crix or Terra Onion can deliver an official firmware update to turn the game from dead to alive. In fact, the Mega EverDrive Pro was previously unsuited with Delta until the genuine solution from Crix came out in August 2020. So in light of this, I will make a pinned comment and edit it when a new firmware is available for any of today's equipment and will alert you if anything changes. But as of November 2020, the Mega EverDrive Pro is the only one that can give you the full Sonic Delta experience.